In today's video, we're going to look at how to insert various items within a for each loop that are not part of that loop's data. This may be useful in a lot of cases where you don't want to just include a giant list of a loop, but there are specific items you want to highlight in between that loop. So let's start a project, name it anything, doesn't really matter, uh, and let's get started. We don't need any additional uh, setups, a basic project will do fine. And we're going to start by just creating two very simple data structures. The first one we're going to call data1, and it's going to be an array of strings, in this case, uh, just letters A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, and the second one is going to be a data2, and that's going to be an array of integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to use these uh, for our loops, and the very first one we're going to create is uh, what you've probably already encountered, which is a for each loop using a data list or a data array, id of dot self, and within that we're going to say, give us a text field, escape it so we can put a variable inside it, uh, and that variable is going to be d. Uh, that's going to give us each of uh, those letters in the array, and there shouldn't be anything surprising here. Now, what we're going to try to do is, how do we insert the numbers with in between the letters? How do we do that in case um, we want to show different types of data within that list? And we can do that uh, fairly simply, but it's, it's a little tricky. Um, so just to show you what it would look like if we added another for each loop with the numbers it's going to look exactly the same except we're going to use the data to structure uh, and have uh, the list of numbers just follow the list of letters so um, fairly straightforward so far now, how do we create a list that is that varies between letters and numbers? And the way to do that is going to be do a for each loop, but instead of uh, using the entire data structure, we're just going to say go from zero to one, use the same ID as dot self. Uh, and then when we look at D, uh, D in here, we're just going to say uh, the same thing. We're going to say display a text field with D inside it. Uh, but actually, the way we're going to do it is we're going to say, look at data one and give me the array uh, number D. So in this case, it's going to just give us the first item in the array. So it's only just going to show A. Because we said go from zero to one, that's only one uh, item, and we're only getting the first item of the array. Now we can do the same thing with the numbers array as data two. Uh, and we're going to say go from zero to one and show me uh, the that number of items from data two. So here we're only going to get the first one from data two as well. And so we end up with uh, actually zeros because there is a typo, as you'll see. Uh, what we actually need to do is say self dot data two uh, brackets n and that will give us the index of n, uh, which is one and uh, that's how we do that. Now to complete the list, we're going to do another for each with the remainder of data one. And the way we do that is we say one dot dot less than data one dot count because that gives us the total number of items within data one. And here, same pattern, we're gonna say give us a text field with uh, the uh, index of D and that's going to complete the data one list so it's going to go from a one and then b c d and similarly we're going to just uh, to finish it off do the same thing but for the data two array of integers we're going to say go from one until the end of that array uh, and give us a text field with the remainder of those numbers and that's going to give us then essentially uh, this interlocking um, view of the two different data arrays. And this is very useful if you need it for your projects where you need to pull data from different arrays but have them show on the same list. Hopefully this was helpful. If you uh, liked it, hit like and subscribe and I'll keep making the videos.